80% of these things after investigation can be explained as misidentifications. In 15% of cases, there's probably insufficient information to be sure. 5%, very interesting. And into that 5% go sort of cases where UFOs have been seen by uh, commercial airline pilots, uh, by military personnel, sometimes by RAF pilots. Uh, cases where these things have been tracked on civil and sometimes military radar performing extraordinary speeds and manoeuvres. Definitely the majority of all UFO reports can be explained in conventional terms. Mm -hmm. You know, we forget that the word, the acronym UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object and unfortunately it's become synonymous with alien spaceship. But of the unexplained cases, of which there are hundreds of thousands, there have been millions of UFO reports, we know that, worldwide, mm -hmm. there are hundreds of thousands which are unexplained. And the best ones for me, the ones I find the most convincing, are from qualified observers, such as astronauts, military and civilian pilots, air traffic controllers, because we forget that many UFO reports have been corroborated by radar, and even if the pilots and air traffic controllers have been drinking, radar sets normally uh, are abstemious in that respect. I can't rule out the idea of extraterrestrial visitation. I hate science fiction. I'd had no interest in the subject, certainly no belief, so I went in there really not knowing what to expect. But uh, I, I must admit that uh, some of the things that I saw, both in terms of the old files, the, the ones that are now being released, mm. and of course the day-to-day -day business of, of the investigations on the new cases as they came in, that convinced me that by the end of that tour of duty, I thought, well, I still don't know what UFOs are, mm. but there is more to this than just misidentifications of aircraft lights and weather balloons, even though by volume that accounts for most of it. Well, I, I was sent this extraordinary book the Flying Saucers Are Real, by Major Donald Kehoe, was sent to me by a cousin in America who knew of my passion for aviation and space travel for as long as I can remember. I think there's something in my mother's baby book to the effect that at the age of a few months old, Timothy seems uh, unnaturally fascinated by all manner of flying objects. But I've always been mad about aircraft and space travel, so it was a natural progression. Mm. And especially when I read that it was pilots and, as I say, uh, both military and civilian and air traffic controllers were, were confirming these things, so that really uh, clinched it for me. I've never seen a UFO, let alone a, um, anything more exotic um, in an Air Force no, hangar. No spooky experiences at all? No, not really, but in a sense I think that's that kind of gives me an advantage because it means that as somebody who uh, used to have this as a job for the government, as somebody who now commentates on it in the media and writes about it um, for the newspapers, for example, I can, I can do so in a fairly dispassionate way and, and I can sort of say, look, I'm not some 
um, believer trying to ram a view down people's throats. But this was my job. I did this for the government. This is what I, I know. Well, I, I've selected from my book what for me is one of the most compelling images of an unknown flying craft that I've ever seen. It was taken in 1963 by an Avenza Airlines, that's Venezuelan Airlines pilot, sitting in the right-hand seat as the first officer. He took it through the window with his camera showing a craft, its shadow on the jungle beneath, and the aircraft shadow is also quite clearly visible, that of a DC-4, and you can see part of the engine, what's called the spinner, of this four-engined airliner. And the photograph has been analysed by professional topographers and mathematicians, despite the fact it, has been, it was debunked almost as soon as it had appeared by all sorts of people who were either ignorant or were professional debunkers. And I've made my own tests on it using an actual model of a craft and an airliner. This picture was taken in 1951 um, in California with a camera which was mounted on a plate, uh, on a telescope. It could only be used in conjunction with a telescope. Okay. So very, very difficult to fake. And it shows a craft which is estimated to be anything from 1,500 feet in length and some smaller craft which were seen to leave it, mm -hmm. which appear to be surrounded by some kind of corona, which many physicists believe is a corona of, of plasma associated with the propulsion system of some of these objects. On May 2008, uh, the chief astronomer from the Vatican said that the existence of extraterrestrials actually didn't contradict church teaching. And then on the 23rd of July, we had Dr. Edgar Mitchell, who was the sixth man to walk on the moon, uh, actually saying that there had been a cover-up, that he had been briefed, and that Roswell really did happen. This is really turning into be what I've called summer of the sources. Uh, you've mentioned in your intro there a couple of the things that have happened, mm. uh, these extraordinary statements that we've had, but there's been much more. Um, in May this year, the Ministry of Defence, where I worked for 21 years, started what's going to be a three to four year process to release its entire archive. The Vatican statement that you mentioned happened within about two days of that. Um, Roswell, I mean, that's a massive topic that everybody always wants to talk about. Yes. What are your feelings on that? Well, it definitely happened. There's dispute about some of the sites where, it, where the craft crashed. There, some people say there was more than one craft, too. My own information from my own clandestine sources is mm. that at least one craft was actually shot down by the United States Army Air Forces. Okay. And it took several days before it came down. And ac according to this particular source who gave me this information, who I've actually named in the book, he's a former state representative for New Mexico and a former aerospace engineer, he said a colleague of his actually saw one of these recovered craft and he could see the, the entry holes for the particular caliber of ammunition that would have been used to bring this craft down. And this led to an extraordinary um, conflict, if you, I can only describe it as that, because not just in the United States, but all over the world, um, following the, that incident, mm -hmm. the UFOs, or some of them, began to attack our aircraft. And right. many, even airliners, not just military planes, but many airliners were lost during this conflict situation. And I believe it's a conflict situation which continues to this day to some extent. That's not to say they're all hostile by any means.
the Aztec case in, 19, in 1948, which was actually far more impressive than the Roswell case, in my opinion. The, a, a craft about 100 feet in diameter was recovered by uh, military intelligence and scientific intelligence specialists, and I've been to the actual crash site where this thing came down, uh, practically all in one piece, and the, the Americans acquired a tremendous amount of uh, technological information from that craft. It was in March of 1948, and many witnesses, uh, actually there have been sort of deathbed confessions, mm -hmm. which have been uh, reported and witnessed by uh, Scott Ramsey and his wife Suzanne, who, who are planning a book on, on this case. And I've done a chapter about it in, in Need to Know. And uh, many scientists were involved. They eventually managed to get into this craft through a hole in one of the portals. Again, this implies to me that it was perhaps shot down. And there were, I think, uh, quite a number of small alien bodies which were charred. They were all deceased and they all had apparently uh, died as a result of exposure to the atmosphere, which had obviously got in through one of the cabins. But you've also said that you believe that there are aliens living among us. Um, Absolutely, yes. I mean, I, I think... So, so I how think, come some of them are dying and some of them are absolutely fine? Because there are different levels of evolution. My information is that this, this is nothing new about aliens. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the, the Hindu Vedas, the Brahmin records, the Bible talks about extraordinary beings coming out of the sky in flying machines and uh, I know they're often referred to as angels in the Bible for example but they're usually described as having the appearance of a man mm. and that's the, a quote from one of the Old Testament uh, reports. Well yeah the book of Genesis is, is kind of full of Elohim and um, the, Absolutely. the sons of God saw the peoples sons, of the skies coming that's, down. And that's a very good quote actually. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and came in unto them. You can't can't get more graphic than that. And I think that is a very early reference to hybridization. I think we are a hybridized species. I think some of these beings have been on planet Earth for much longer than we have, and we were colonized. Edgar Mitchell, um, I know, and I've discussed uh, his opinions uh, about the subject, and, and as many of you out there will know, mm. about five or six weeks ago, he, he, uh, he was reported in, the, in the, the national media that, you know, there was, there's been a massive cover-up since the 1940s and that contact has been established. But, I mean, actually, he's been saying this for years, but this was the first time he said it uh, quite so pointedly. Yes. Um, but, yes, I mean... It, when Correct, you're absolutely right about that. And yeah. he's, he's even emphasised, you know, I've been saying this for years, but suddenly it's picked up and it, and it becomes a news item. Um, so how long have you known Dr. Edgar Mitchell? I've met him once. I've corresponded with him over, I would say, about six or seven years. Okay. And your opinion of him is I, that... He's absolutely, totally reliable in my opinion and a very brave man to come forward. It's very interesting, in Need to Know, I have the report from Buzz Aldrin that Apollo 11 was actually paced on the way to the moon in July of 1969. And uh, he's since sort of changed his statement to a certain extent, but um, it, he made it on a British television documentary mm. and it was supported by Dr. David Baker, Apollo 11 senior scientist, that there was a craft which was beside the vehicle, Apollo 11. It was bell-shaped when looked at through the monocular, through the cabin windows, and all the crew members saw it. The 
there are certainly some um, very, very big hitters in, in America and indeed here in Britain who, who have said, yeah, very much we, we believe that this is a real phenomenon. Mm. Um, recently, of course, in the presidential uh, campaign, one of the candidates, Dennis Kucinich, um, it was revealed that he'd seen a UFO, actually at Shirley MacLaine's um, house, so that's, that's a nice little <laughs> tie-in. One wonders what they were getting up to. Well, <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. then uh, Fife Symington, mm. who's a former two-term governor of the state of Arizona, um, said in relation to a very famous wave of UFO sightings that happened uh, in Phoenix uh, in 1997, he said, not only um, he said, Did, was this absolutely real and I was governor at the time, he recently said, but I saw it too. And mm. the really interesting thing is that... Um, Didn't he, he deny it at the time when he was in office? This was really famous. He held a press conference mm. where he said, we found the culprit and out onto stage came his chief of staff dressed up in an alien suit. So he debunked the whole thing. Mm. Uh, he has now said, look, I'm really sorry uh, that I did that. He said, but things were getting out of hand. There was mass hysteria. Uh, hundreds of calls were coming in. But isn't that precisely why we're not going to get uh, a major statement by a government because they wouldn't want to take responsibility for, as, you, as you've spoken about, perhaps the ensuing panic? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, that situation was quite extraordinary. I think one of the other problems, if there is some big secret that the government uh, or several governments are going to release, one of the problems is actually a constitutional one because it's, it's one thing to say we've found alien life and here it is. Mm. The problem is, but we've been lying to you about it for 60 years by, by previously denying it. So, so that's a constitutional problem. Dr. Edgar Mitchell, um, the sixth man to walk on the moon, and he was on, I believe, three of the Apollo missions. Um, graduated from MIT, uh, one of the most highly regarded uh, astronauts of our time. Surely what he says is credible, but then wasn't there a statement released uh, by the American government, or was it? NASA released a statement, right. yes. Um, and NASA, obviously for the reasons you've said, this guy is an all-American hero. Uh, you have to be very, very careful uh, in America about um, uh, making any criticisms of the astronauts. Um, NASA said, it was a very interesting statement, mm. they said, uh, Dr. Edgar Mitchell is a great American, but we do not agree with him on this issue. Right. Then Edgar Mitchell was, uh, and, and they went on to say, NASA isn't covering up the truth about UFOs. Edgar Mitchell turned around when he was quizzed about this afterwards and said, yeah, but it's not NASA that have the lead on this. NASA probably don't even know about this, some of this stuff. He, he says that, that a lot of this is, is more, more a sort of cabal of people from different agencies. Right. More of, of like kind of... the Illuminati or well, something. <laughs> something like that, yeah. Right. As opposed to one entire agency that knows all about this and is covering up. This is a up. secret club of all it's different types of agencies. A person here, a person there, key people in maybe a number of different agencies. Mm. This is what he's saying. But he claims to have uh, sources at um, very, very high level in the Pentagon and elsewhere. And let's face it, if you were actually going to confide in someone, mm. uh, and, and people can't keep secrets, an astronaut is exactly the sort of thing, uh, the sort of person that you would probably tell about UFO secrets. It's very difficult with these things. He may be deliberately trying to muddy the trail a bit. And the one thing I know, not least from my 21 years in government, is that if, if you ever you get questions about your sources, mm. you have to be very careful. And sometimes you actually have to throw in the odd red herring. I mean, if there is part, some kind of secret society of people in the know, 
Are you part of that society? Well, you see, this is, <laughs> this is where I can't win. I've been accused of being a disinformation agent. Um, but you see, if, if I say to you, look, actually, Frankie, I'm not. You know, the, the viewers, the, the real die-hard conspiracy theorists who think that aren't going to suddenly go, thanks, Nick, for clearing that up. Uh, they're going to go, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? Um, so I can't win. Well, you would win. say that, wouldn't you? Well, I would, yes. <laughs> a, a cover-up which is obviously what you believe who is responsible and why the secrecy well the cover-up goes back really to I, I would say towards the end of of the Second World War because you know people have heard about the so-called Foo Fighters which appeared during the war to the to the Axis pilots to US Army Air Forces Royal Air Force German J Japanese often described as f as fuzzy blobs but in fact there were sightings of enormous craft such as the one in my book which was a giant object seen by the entire crew of a Lancaster bomber which all affected them at the time and that information has never been released officially okay so very briefly do you think the UK is in a cover up or definitely so it's Most not definitely. Just the US. Um, we, well, the way it was put to me quite a long time ago by a former director of MI6 was Timothy, I think you'll find we leave that to the Americans. If you ever you get questions about your sources, mm. you have to be very careful, and sometimes you actually have to throw in the old red herring. The way it was put to me quite a long time ago by a former director of MI6 was, Timothy, I think you'll find we leave that to the Americans. I mean, there is certainly a, a body of people who believe that many of the um, cutting-edge scientific discoveries that we've seen in recent decades actually came from the UFO that crashed at Roswell. Um, and there, there are many, many people who believe that this technology is gradually being mm. seeded out uh, through, of course, predominantly American uh, companies um, to, to get the technology out there, but to make sure America um, maintains the, the I mean, advantage. Just, just to bring it back to the subject, Dr. Edgar Mitchell said that absolutely Roswell did happen. Yes. And, and he should know, he's been on the moon and three Apollo missions. Well, yes, I mean, um, that is interesting. And of course, it's not just Edgar Mitchell. Um, recently, there's been a lot of um, so called deathbed testimony from the last few. Um, people who were actually there when Roswell happened in, in July of 1947, including Walter Hout, the um, public relations officer at uh, the, the army base. Uh, and, and he, in a, in a signed affidavit that, that uh, came out recently, uh, said yes, it was real, there was a crashed spaceship, uh, there were aliens. So, uh, who wrote The Day After Roswell. Um, I mean, what's your take on him? Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel Philip Corso. I never met him, but I found a lot of his testimony credible. Unfortunately, the book was edited by William Burns, who injected a few slight uh, inaccuracies in it. And I know that Corso himself was not happy about that because he told a friend of mine. For example, he said, Corso, that they actually waited until American um, it, the industrial corporations were actually beginning to get a handle on some of these advanced technologies before passing over the materials that, that had been recovered from Roswell and perhaps elsewhere. So that, that was one of the most important things he, he wanted to put across. 
I know many people have said that, oh, we found that he wasn't on the National Security Council. Mm. Well, he wasn't on the National Security Council, but I've got his military records and they show that he was on the National Intelligence, National Security Council's intelligence staff right. for quite a few years as an intelligence officer. And he, had, he was involved with the Special Coordinations Board, which... Uh, dealt with some of the most sensitive clandestine operations mounted by the United States, States government. So, you know, he did have, he did have a, a, a very, very good intelligence background. Before um, Roswell, I mean, you, you speak about kind of aircraft crashes yes. uh, in the 40s. Yes. Now, this is, I think, one of the main reasons for the cover-up, one of them, certainly at that time, for heaven's sake, was that when the Americans, with the German scientists headed by Werner von Braun mm. at White Sands Proving Ground, started test flying, the test launching the, the captured Nazi V2 rockets, the UFOs increased their surveillance and they started buzzing the rockets and in several cases causing them actually to crash or come down to earth prematurely. And one of these instances was actually officially confirmed in a local newspaper, which I've reproduced in the book. And the director of the White Sands Missile Base says that uh, unexplained phenomena were responsible for bringing down the rocket. Now what happened then was the Americans renewed their effort to try and get one of these craft or more down for evaluation. They succeeded and all hell let loose because th all over the world, not just in the United States, aircraft crashes, many, many completely unexplained crashes, not just military planes sent to intercept UFOs, which were being reported in the press every day at that time, but worldwide and civilian airliners. And typically what happened was planes would be able to get off the ground, in aviation terms they call that unsticking, unable to get off the ground and would crash either at the end of the runway or shortly after takeoff, killing passengers, so it's not just military planes, and the official explanation invariably was the aircraft ran out of fuel. How many planes run out of fuel just after taking off, you know, it just doesn't make up. But nobody, nobody really questioned it too much at that time. But an emergency situation was declared by uh, President Truman at the time. And this started in, in around um, April, May of 1947. And there have been... So how many of these crashes were there? Well, I, know the, I don't know the exact figures, but I know now the Defence Department figures from 1952 to 1956. There were 18,662 crashes, of which 9.5% were unexplained. And they were, that's 1,773 crashes which were due as it says officially, to unexplained causes, unknown causes. I know from my own sources that, that quite a number of solid craft have been recovered. I know that communications have been established since the early 1940s with select individuals in the military and intelligence community very, very occasionally within governments, uh, such as a few presidents have had contact. So the proof is all there. As to evidence, there is, there is excellent evidence that we have in the civilian world of actual craft. I've produced uh, color photographs of an apparent alien in my last book, Unearth Earthly Disclosure, Photographs taken in Italy in 1993, which I'm convinced are absolutely genuine. But you didn't see the real thing? I didn't see the real thing. Oops, because it could be slightly paper mache. Sorry, my ear thing. It could be, night. it could be, but I hired a forensic scientist who works for the police on, on um, imagery uh -huh. to study the photographs, which were Polaroids, and I made copies from the original, I examined the originals myself. And furthermore, the witness had, on one occasion, a close up sighting encounter with this creature when, when it was photographed. So that's the best I can come up with, but you know, believe me, they've got a lot of better information uh, hidden behind uh, closed doors.
you know, one of my friends and the chap who actually wrote the foreword to my latest book, Bill Gunston, is arguably the world's leading aviation historian. And he is convinced that there's no way the Germans could have produced advanced circular flying craft during World War II. They were certainly testing circular flying machines, but there's no way they could have been responsible for all the Foo Fighter sightings and sightings of much larger objects. Had the Germans been responsible, they would have won the war. Right, but do you think the Germans at that point perhaps had contact with the extraterrestrials as well? No, I've heard, I've heard this rumour. I don't discount it. I think later on, certainly, there was contact established with German scientists, particularly those working on the United States space program. Mm -hmm. But um, as to earlier than that, I, I very much doubt it. And I think a lot of material has come out via Nazi propagandists about Hitler escaping to South America and, you know, with fleets of flying saucers and with a base in Antarctica and so, and so, and so forth. Right, and it's something else that I found really interesting was um, you spoke about Kennedy's trip, uh, President Kennedy's trip to see the alien bodies. Yes. Um, I mean, sorry, would you mind elaborating for Not our viewers at all. on that? No, no, I, I was informed by a reliable source attached to JFK's source, White House staff, that in 1961-1962, John Kennedy requested the observation of actual alien bodies, which he had learned had been recovered right. by, by the military. And his wish was granted, and he was taken on Air Force One. The plane was full of generals. It was a top. Uh, it was uh, led, led by uh, General McHugh, was in charge of the operation. Um, it was a top secret mission. Kennedy saw the bodies. He was taken to Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida, and the bodies were located at a special medical facility on at that site. I mean, do you think that had something to do with his assassination? I don't know. But there are several pointers that might indicate some truth to that rumour. Like the rumours associated with Marilyn Monroe, I don't discount those either. There are some very strange things about her. So you believe Marilyn Monroe was murdered? I don't know, but I'm very suspicious about the, the suicide, um, particularly since she was connected with, the, with, with both Kennedys, um, JFK and his brother. So there is, a, there is some possibility there for, for a good conspiracy theory. My information is that there are some highly advanced craft, some of them spacecraft, which certainly the Americans and maybe one or two other governments, I don't know yet, but certainly the Americans um, are flying and I think they've been in service for quite some time and of course this gives rise to all sorts of questions about unidentified flying objects. Just how many of the above top secret craft that the Americans have are, are normally seen in, in um, you know, unrestricted areas is, is very questionable but I think some sightings must relate to that. Now as to what type of technology is involved, I believe it, it involves anti-gravity and highly sophisticated means of transport. In 1993, Ben Rich, who headed the Skunk Works, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, which developed the stealth F-117 plane, said in the presence of two friends of mine at the, at the University of Southern California, University of California, that we have the technology now to go to the stars. He confirmed this, but he also said that all this is, is hidden in, in uh, above top secret black budget programs and he said it would take an act of God to bring this out into the civilian world for the benefit of humanity. So that's very interesting. In 1993, here's a man who was in a position to know who says that we already have the technology, short of a few equations, he said in 1993, I hasten to add. Now, 
The sketch beneath this photograph of a Japan Airlines cargo plane was made by the pilot of this Jumbo 747 in 1986 right. following the sighting of a gigantic UFO near Anchorage, which was also um, tracked on radar. And there below is his sketch of this walnut-shaped object. And I don't know if viewers can see, but the, the size of the plane be, uh, underneath it to the right underneath the, the rim, the lip of the craft, for comparison, shows that it absolutely dwarfed. This was an enormous object, and it was seen by the entire crew, and as I say, tracked on radar, and that was uh, confirmed by civil aviation authorities and the CIA, who tried to discredit the story. have a number of sources which you keep referring to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, are all of these sources, uh, do they kind of speak off the record? Do some of them wish to remain anonymous? Some of them speak definitely off the record, that's for sure. Um, other, others feel that certain information, the time has come to reveal this information. And I'm not the only uh, reporter, if you like. I'm, I'm a professional writer um, of books, not a, not a journalist as such, though I have written articles for newspaper, but I hold a press card. And I know that a number of very distinguished um, journalists in the United States, for example, have been given some of the basics of this information so that it's not as if we're all going to be completely unprepared. But um, it's not just in the United States, by the way, where I have acquired um, information. So where else in the world have you acquired this information? Well, I, I'd rather not say, actually, but uh, oh, okay. certain, certain countries. OK, so would you say that some countries are more forthcoming than others? I would definitely say that, yes. OK, but you're unable to say which countries? And I would say also that I, the information I get is is very, very occasional, and it's really a, 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 like fitting pieces to a jigsaw. But do you kind of vet all of your sources? I mean, can someone Absolutely. just turn up and say, uh, I, I work oh, for the military? Oh, we have to be very, very, very careful, and I usually check out their credentials, with, with, and I'm often introduced through somebody else. You need very, very high security clearances to get anywhere near these programs, which include an alien liaison program contact has been established. But you've managed to get close enough to amass all this wealth of information. Yes, I have. So surely it can't be that difficult. I mean, you've been... No, and, and it's not just uh, military and scientific intelligence personnel who've had contact. People from all walks of life, and I, I, I hasten to, to emphasise that, all walks of life, not just farmers in the outback, have had communications with extraterrestrials. I would say tens of thousands. Take 1954, for example, Air Marshal Sir Peter Horsley. He was Deputy Chief of, Street Com of Strike Command with his finger on the nuclear trigger at the time. He was an equerry, a military attaché for the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh for seven years at Buckingham Palace when this event happened to him. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, he actually, at some, at some time in the 50s, was working in the Ministry of Defence Operations Room dealing with UFOs and collaborating with the Americans, and he could never get near their top secrets. But he did have, he claims to have had a two-hour meeting with an extraterrestrial human being in the middle of London, arranged for him via a British Army general. Happy. And I spoke to him at great length about that, and I'm convinced he was telling the truth. And one of the most disturbing things he found during that encounter was that this alien knew all Britain's top secret nuclear secrets and knew everything that was in Sir Peter's mind. When the wall came down, late 88, I think it was, um, I was invited to the, Soviet, the former Soviet Union, and I appeared on television. And they were very, very open about the subject. I, I was talking about um, all sorts of things for, for a, at least a half an hour on a live program in, in uh, St. Petersburg. It's very interesting. Um, in 1977, mm. this is not generally known, that a 10 to 12 year top secret program to investigate UFOs by the military was established by President Andropov. 
this was initiated in 1977 by President uh, Yuri Andropov, who used to be, uh, for much longer than he was president, head of the KGB, that's the, you know, the Soviet uh, CIA. And he initiated this program because the military was getting gravely concerned about the intrusion of UFOs, and four million soldiers were involved throughout the territories of the Soviet Union to investigate. They were told, they were told <laughs> to look for them, to take down details of any reports, and so forth and pass it up the line and it was classified top secret top secret code word top secret institute 22 was was the uh, additional code word to that program top and secret it, with four million people involved four million soldiers <laughs> and the information did not come out until about uh, 10 years ago with David Icke's work? Um, I don't think so. Does he write about UFOs? I don't think so. Yeah, he does, writes does about he... UFOs and reptilians. Oh, reptilian aliens. I, I, I find it very hard to take that seriously, I have to say. So you do believe in aliens, but not reptilian aliens? There have been a few sightings of aliens with reptilian type skin, yes. But uh, as to, as to uh, aliens inhabiting Human bodies, I don't buy it. Okay. I have no evidence for it. I've never learnt that myself from my own investigations. So what's your opinion on chemtrails? Well, I have to say, uh, I, I, I've no doubt that ch chemicals have been sprayed um, for various purposes at various times. But, but to, 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 a, a, to the great mm. height involved, to spread chemicals, spray chemicals, from aircraft at thousands of feet up, 30,000 feet or, or, or more, is, is absurd because they would, the, the particles would dissipate. There's absolutely no way they can target anything like that. So I'm, I'm totally unconvinced by that, I'm afraid. What about alien abduction? Definitely, people have been abducted. That's the bottom line. Probably tens of thousands of people. Maybe millions, I don't know the figure, we know that just like UFOs, the majority can be explained. There are an awful lot of wannabes in the abduction field. You know, it's become uh, a little bit of an iffy subject, but people have definitely been abducted. Alien abduction is, is I, I always think, uh, related but separate to the UFO issue. But yes, I think I've certainly come across people, whether they're claiming alien abduction, or actually, even if it's just a, a fairly up-close and personal UFO sighting, um, I've come across people who are clearly um, shocked by it, and in some cases, I think, yes, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. What do you think of uh, hypnotherapy and kind of regression therapy as a, as a means of, of dealing with um, alien abduction? I'm glad you raised that, Frankie. I think this is, I feel very strongly about this. I, I think it, that hypnotherapy, hypnotic regression, can be a very useful tool, but it should be used by qualified people. It's possible if you're dealing with someone who is mentally deluded, you are enhancing their delusions. You really need to know what you're, you're doing medically, I think. One of my other questions as well is animal mutilation. Yeah. I mean, do you believe that that's a real thing? Definitely. Phenomenon? I've investigated them personally in, in, um, in, Amer in the United States and in Puerto Rico, Commonwealth of the United States. They are happening, they're still happening, uh, mostly in Argentina and Chile at the moment. Um, I don't have all the explanations, but Having spoken to a police officer in Puerto Rico who actually shot one of the creatures responsible for the mutilations, the, sh the so-called chupacabras or goat sucker, shot it at, you know, like from a range of five or six feet when it was trying to kill his dog. I have no doubt that these creatures exist and that uh, those are some of the creatures associated with the animal mutilations. As to the purpose of it, I don't know. I guess they need materials.
I would say I'd had about four encounters with aliens in my life, um, what, which what proved kind of to me human appearing aliens, but certain very v hardly noticeable differences. The first was in the United States in 1963. Um, the second was in New York in 1967, when I actually sat down next to one of these, these beings. I mean, I don't know if we have time to go into the story, but... Uh, I, I think we do. I mean, how did you know it was an well, alien? Um, or he, she was there's, an alien? There's a little background to it. I was actually with the London Symphony Orchestra at the time, doing a series of concerts with the London Symphony Orchestra and, and Rostropovich, the, the great cellist. And uh, one afternoon, I tr attempted a telepathic experiment because I'd been talking to people who claimed to have had regular meetings in Washington with extraterrestrials. So I sent out the thought, if any of you guys from elsewhere are around, come down and sit down next to me and prove it. Well, you know, various people came, came and went. I was sitting in the hotel lobby at the time. Mm -hmm. And eventually this guy comes in, about five foot ten. He was immaculately dressed, slightly tanned, slightly wavy, fair hair. Uh -huh. um, he had an attaché case, he sat down next to me. From the attaché case, very sort of deliberately took out New York Times, he went through the pages, turned them like this, gradually folded the newspaper, put it back in the attaché case. I said to him in my mind, if you're the guy I'm looking for, take your right index finger and hold it to the right side of your nose. Instantly he did just that and kept it there. So. I was dumbfounded. I thought, well, what do I do next? He's going to talk to me. But nothing happened. I just didn't talk. I stayed there. He was there for quite a, quite a while. And he got up. He looked at me quite seriously. And then eventually he left. I'd recognize him if I saw him again. How many species of aliens do you think there are? I think there are many. Uh, and this visiting is Earth? many. Not we hear about these archetypal greys and uh, reptilians and uh, Nordics and so forth. This is this is really a, a, a bit childish. There, there are many many subdivisions of aliens exist. Believe me. And what do you think they want from us? It varies. Some of them, I think, have their BDI on this planet. Earth mm. is unique in our solar system and, and maybe for a, you know quite a way around. It's it's obviously attractive to beings from elsewhere. It's got tremendous resources. It's got a huge amount of water and other resources that they obviously acquire here. Well, we, we've talked, of course, about the um, Vatican's chief astronomer yes. just back in as recently as May, saying that uh, the existence of extraterrestrial life would not be contradictory to the teachings of the church. Now, it, you know, some people have suggested they know something and they're just trying to, to kind of hedge their bets. Um, but actually, you know, through a combination, it's, it, when the opinion polls are taken on this issue, um, consistently over 50% of people believe in this sort of thing anyway. So on the day they do announce something, um, if that day comes, I think an awful lot of people will actually say, yeah, I kind of figured that there was something like that. Mm. So I'm not sure there would be the undermining of world religions, uh, panic in the streets, things like that. I, I think people would say, yeah, so what? We, we always knew it. And do you think there is going to be any type of major disclosure soon by a government or a body? Well, as for, as for genetics, I, I'm convinced that some aliens have a hybridization program. I'm absolutely 100% convinced of that, and we are part of that. We've been hybridized before, we can be hybridized again, and they probably need materials from us to produce their own hybridized species. As for disclosure, well, it depends what's being disclosed, and if there is disclosure by governments, are we going to get the whole truth? I seriously doubt it. <laughs> I seriously doubt it. There's going to be spin. They cannot tell us the whole truth. It's got to be gradual. It's not just members of the public out walking a dog late at night. Mm. It's celebrities. It's police officers. It's military pilots. Don't be afraid if you've seen a UFO. 
to make a report uh, to the MOD, uh, to the media, to a UFO group, wherever, because people really are in very good company. Oh, my God.